Right, so, video two of the Go Large. There'll be a lot that carries over to the medium and the small too, because all three of the Go's use Octoprint. So we have a Raspberry Pi under here. I would lift this up and show you. Is the bottom on here? No. Oh, we could okay. do that, but not right now. Okay, so the first thing I want you to see is that the cool thing about Octoprint is you can control this thing remotely. Notice, no smoke or mirrors. Uh, this is logged into Octoprint right now. Prove it, Steve, make it move. And there's no wires. Uh, his I need out. a hula hoop that's like, no wires. <laughs> no. Ready? Here we go. Okay, so he can move it. So again, just to recap a little bit. First of all, we love Gina, uh, the developer of Octoprint. We think she's done a fantastic job. We think it's really important to get your 3D printer connected to the internet. Um, we choose to use Octoprint to do that in a Raspberry Pi. Um, I make microcontroller boards. I mean, like Arduino derivative is the printer board. And it's more expensive for me to make a printer board, not much more, but it's more expensive to make that without Wi-Fi, without an ARM chip, without an Ethernet plug, than it is to just buy a Raspberry Pi. So that's why I've chosen to do that, because we get so much for so little. So we've got a printer board in there. We've got an extruder board, which enables these other two uh, you know, motors. you got a triple extruder now. Um, it gets a little confusing. We'll get into that later. But uh, we have the printer board, the extruder board, and a Raspberry Pi. And we actually have a voltage regulator that Nick got for us um, from, I think it's Parallax. Mm -hmm. And it's a small little thing to, we run the Raspberry Pi. So anyway, the point is there's a mess of wires under there, but um, it all is magic because you can control it with your phone. So show them what you're doing there. This is Jeremy. Jeremy runs our shop uh, for the kit production and laser cutting, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so to show you, I'm already logged in. We're actually both logged in at the same time. So. That's pretty cool. So my so phone. So I log in too? Yep. <laughs> now let's talk about the process. So yep, we're, we're moving it right now. Let's talk about the process. So when you first pull up Octoprint for the very first time, um, again, it's an ad hoc network. So it's gonna say go large network. And you'll be prompted to, to set a username and password. You'll take your browser to 192.168.1.1, kind of like your home router. And it will prompt you to do a username and password. Even though you have the option to ignore that, you make your decision now and you gotta live with it. So I highly recommend you pick a username and password, okay? So do that. It's gonna go through a series of reboots. It's gonna reset. Basically, it's gonna take some time, so get ready to wait. But I highly recommend you go to octoprint.org and follow the instructions there, dig into the community. There's a lot of improvements we can make to Octoprint. We've talked to Gina about some of the things that we're, we would love to do. But it's open source, it's awesome, use it. But uh, be prepared, because there's a little bit of, it's a little finicky, this is early. I mean, this is the first, is this the first bots that we've shipped with Raspberry Pi and like bolted to the board? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're all in, um, but be patient and help us make this better, okay? So uh, he's logged in. He's logged in on a phone. He's logged in on a Mac. You can do it on Windows. You can do it on an iPad, Android, um, Windows. It's a browser. Uh, it's a browser. So that's the beauty of it, right? All right. So we're logged in and we're moving, and I've asked him to heat things up. So we're heated up. Yeah. We have heated up all three. So what I like to do, by the way, a little tip, um, when you heat these things up, make sure you get plastic in there uh, because we want to make sure there's some. We want to make sure we're not going to char the plastic. It's always real soupy right at the beginning. We don't want the plastic to char in there and kind of Basically, yeah, yesterday we were getting the first one, it'll clog it. So if you have these up to temp, definitely uh, get some plastic in there. So, so we've, we've now determined that we can connect to the bot. We can move uh, the bot, we can control it through Octoprint. So there's a couple of things that we're going to do. And 
we're going to do that in the next video, but I want to show, did you pull up a, a calibration cube or we which have, one do you have pulled up? We have both. Ready to go. Okay. So what we're going to do is why don't we, I'm going to put a spool on here and let's do a calibration cube and just start it printing. This is totally raw as far as like this, does it look staged? <laughs> but uh, there's two things we want to know. Can we print a cube and how does it print? Um, but before we get to printing, we have to calibrate a little bit. So let me just give you a grand overview of the things at play here. First thing I want to do is make sure that this side and this side are totally level. That might be fun to do first. 